Good evening, village residents. A little over a year ago, our village embarked upon a self-management initiative that promised to improve customer service and efficiency of operations and enhance the experience of residing in our community for our members. I am pleased to report that this effort has yielded exactly the results that were touted and there is much, much more to come. Appropriately, the boards of Laguna Woods Village have asked that I take this opportunity to share our accomplishments, provide a glimpse of improvements to come, and articulate our shared vision for the village of the future. Many of you assisted in this initiative through participation in a variety of governance activities, special meetings, focus groups, club forums, and many other venues to provide your input and expertise to this important and for our village historic experiment in self-management. To you, I offer my thanks and the gratitude of our boards as this effort has not been in vain, but in fact has dramatically altered the trajectory of our community in a very positive way. Many of you have taken the opportunity to meet with me and share your ideas, expectations, and your vision for our village. And for that, I offer my sincerest gratitude and commit my full energy and experience toward the brighter future that we all envision for this unique and wonderful community. For the first time that many can remember, our boards are working in harmony, identifying areas of commonality and working together for the betterment of our village. There are no lawsuits between the mutuals, no recall efforts. In fact, I cannot think of a single area of significant disagreement between the boards. Our problems of security and safety, need for infrastructure investment, desire for enhanced recreational opportunity are all shared, and we will work to resolve these issues together. If there is a single board problem, it is a lack of members interested in serving the community in a governance capacity and I urge residents to consider giving of their time and energy toward this worthwhile calling. We began this year with a commitment to enhance customer service, more efficient operations, a transparent community where information is freely shared and all ideas valued, and a promise of accountability, staff to residents and boards, boards to community, and residents to each other. Creating a culture within VMS that values these basic principles has been the primary focus of senior management and the VMS board over the last year. We have reorganized virtually every department and hired new leadership in several key areas. For example, security, compliance, and social services have been consolidated under the leadership of Tim Moy. And information technology, cable television, and internet service have been consolidated under the leadership of Chuck Holland. There are several other examples as well. I am proud of these organizational efforts and the leaders who have chosen to commit themselves to the betterment of our village. We are off to a great start, but many challenges lay ahead. Our community is now 50 years old, and much of the infrastructure, facilities, manners, and operational systems are showing the stress of age and lack of past investment. There are far too many sewer and water system failures that have a tremendous impact on our residents. Many of our clubhouses, gatehouses, and other facilities are long overdue for needed upgrades or replacement. Our systems that serve residents are paper-based, inefficient, prone to error, and are not optimized for modern customer service delivery. Cable television and internet service designed for far fewer customers are struggling to meet the needs of our residents who increasingly demand levels of service and bandwidth that our current configurations cannot provide. We are making progress in these areas, and I will share many of the details tonight. We have placed significant emphasis and investment on improving communication with our residents. Responsive customer service necessitates two-way communication that is both timely and accurate, that advises residents of important events and activities, provides transparency and governance, and allows residents to opine on all aspects of village life. We now have a variety of tools that meet these objectives, including the monthly Village Breeze that provides direct board communication to residents, weekly What's Up in the Village e-blasts on important community issues, Code Red to advise residents of urgent matters such as a recent lost man, online surveys to gauge residents' opinions, and soon we will unveil a new and highly upgraded website that will both inform and provide many transactional features. In addition, for residents who prefer written communication, we still provide a wealth of information mailed to your residents or available at clubhouses in the community center. In the coming months, a new governance application will provide video streaming of board meetings, 
host a robust collection of board materials and documents, and allow residents to comment on board agenda matters from the convenience of their manner. Lastly, we're in the midst of a major transformation of TV6 to the new and improved Village Television, or VTV. In addition to the shows you currently enjoy, new relevant programming is being developed that will both inform and entertain you with far fewer commercials. These changes were influenced by a survey completed by nearly 2,500 residents in which you shared your preferences and we are responding accordingly. I would like to thank the residents who took the time to assist in this effort and the Media and Communications Committee for their tireless devotion to improve communication with our residents. Other changes that you may have noticed that were informed by resident input include improvements to our recreation and special event offerings, which include longer hours at fitness centers and special bus trips. We're implementing efficiencies to our transit system to reduce the irritating sight of empty buses traversing our community and to provide better service. Very soon, we no longer will use a 24-seat bus to transport a single resident to their destination. Many other examples exist, but none are possible without your input and guidance. Many of you have heard me discuss improved customer service, including the 24-7-365 call center, mobile-enabled field services, improved resident service counter, service order tracking, and online service applications. In fact, two weeks ago, we unveiled our first mobile application for gate access, and over 500 residents downloaded the app and begin registering their guests online. Many more of these enhancements are in the queue, and over the next several months, you'll be seeing major changes in our customer service operations. Change is difficult, and these will be dramatic. There will be interim changes at the resident service office as we take a number of steps towards our goal of world-class customer service. We thank you for your patience as short-term convenience is replaced by long-term improvements characterized by much better and more consistent service. These improvements in customer service and operations generally have necessitated a complete overhaul of our information technology infrastructure, much of which is now complete. Implementations such as dwelling live and gate security, fixing deficient energy management systems, implementing a new call center, adding new security cameras, and many other enhancements rely upon technology platforms capable of accepting the new systems. Likewise, our new website and transactional portal require updated technology to allow our residents to conduct business virtually anywhere and anytime. Our residents call for service over 1.2 million times per year, and our systems are paper-based, which leads to great inefficiency and error. I have often told the story of wanting to bring the Sacramento County customer management system to the village. It served 1.5 million residents. Unfortunately, after hearing of our service demands, that system was deemed inadequate. We have a special community and many residents who need a large and diverse volume of services. The only way to manage this in the long term is with innovative, advanced technology solutions. We are well on the way to this efficient and customer-friendly future. As we are encouraging residents to access services through our online and mobile applications, I am mindful of the inadequacy of the broadband service provided to residents. I have heard from many of you, several in fact, about your dissatisfaction with the current broadband offerings. In the next few months, our narrow casting project will be complete, and I anticipate a doubling of bandwidth to all residents at no additional cost. You may have also heard that we will no longer support broadcast and analog through our cable system. This is true, and here's why. Analog broadcasts use too much bandwidth and slow our internet speeds. Beginning January 8th, 2018, in order to utilize your analog TV, residents will need to purchase a conversion device, upgrade their cable service, or purchase a digital TV. Once this is complete, we expect additional increases in internet speed. There will be considerable communication and outreach well before this date, and we expect a smooth transition to a digital community. You may have noticed TV6 broadcasts are now available in HD. The installation of HD cameras in clubhouses 3 and 5, and you will soon notice HD quality on the broadcast of future board meetings. There has been considerable effort 
and community input in this effort. And I would like to thank the HD Task Force for their considerable effort in making this enhancement possible. Innovation is not limited to technology efforts as evidenced by the solar installations recently undertaken by Third and United Mutual and by the commitment to transform current fleet and transit operations to more sustainable fuels by the Golden Rain Foundation. Also, water, saving landscaping and fixtures, new energy management systems, and many other smart initiatives promise sustainability, efficiency, and savings. Like our nation and state, our village has suffered from aging infrastructure and a lack of investment over the last several decades. You know the issues well because you live with the consequences every day. I often meet with residents whose homes are damaged by water or sewer problems and it is a far too common occurrence. Our mutual boards are making significant investments in dry rot remediation, electrical panel replacement, epoxy coating of water pipes, replacement of failing sewer lines, and a new program to upgrade deteriorating sidewalks. These efforts are well beyond the normal paint and roof replacement work that has been provided at regular intervals and will take many, many years to complete. I applaud your mutual boards for taking a forward view towards fixing these long-term problems. Similarly, our clubhouses, gatehouses, and other facilities have shown the effects of deferred maintenance and for many of them, we are fast approaching the point of no return. We're fixing them may soon not make economic sense. We have already begun to rebuild or replace many of the gatehouses. Gatehouses 5 and 6 were recently demolished and rebuilt, and gatehouses 2, 3, and 14 were remodeled at considerably less expense and are poised for installation of gate access technology in the future. We anticipate updating several more gatehouses in the coming year. Many of you have enjoyed the remodeled Clubhouse 2. It is quite spectacular, and similar efforts are being considered for other clubhouses as well. The Golden Rain Foundation has already initiated improvements at most of the clubhouses, including new roofs, heating and air conditioning replacements, and many other projects, including a major effort at the Performing Arts Center, the new fitness center at the Community Center, and renewed investment in our garden centers are other examples of investing in the village's future. Another area where renewed focus has improved the appearance of our community is our landscaping. We have many new staff, a reinvigorated program, and a sense of purpose that has remarkably improved the look of the community. A little rain has helped as well in leaching the salts from our soil as a result of the community's dependence on reclaimed water. Our tree trimming efforts displayed their worth in the recent storms as our village fared much better than neighboring communities as demonstrated by the number of fallen trees experienced by our neighbors. These storms always seem to hit on the weekend, and I would like to thank our many landscape workers who came in, worked day and night, to ensure the safety of our residents. Lastly, we have just completed the data entry on the new Arbor Pro software, which will provide our crews invaluable data to ensure the health of our trees and increase efficiency in their care. This database will also be available to our residents to obtain information about our urban forests or individual trees or species. Providing safety and security for our residents is our highest priority. There have been significant changes to our approach, including new, highly competent management, a commitment to service and professionalism, and a data-driven focus. The new Dwelling Live gate access technology has been implemented community-wide and is printing passes and collecting data. Gate arms have been installed at gates five and six, and we will issue a report shortly on their effectiveness. I anticipate the construction of gate arms to continue with additional installations proposed for next year. We implemented a new bike patrol unit that will be visible in the community in the coming weeks. The boards have placed a greater emphasis on compliance and the merger of this function with security is working quite well. To illustrate, in 2015, about 1,800 compliance cases were processed compared to nearly 4,000 in 2016 with the same staffing levels. Timelines have been dramatically shortened and enforcement is rapid 
fair and certain. I began requiring criminal background checks on all new employees to ensure your safety. And now we need to expand this to all who wish to reside in our community. Far too often when problems arise, information was available that could have alerted us to the problems ahead. We'll be sharing a new disaster preparedness plan that promised to increase our readiness should such an event befall our village. I will be sending residents this document via email to solicit your comments and copies will be available in the library and at the community center. And lastly, and I am most proud of this, we have installed AED devices throughout the village and provided training to staff on CPR and the use of these life-saving devices. In the few months since this effort was initiated, two village residents have received life-saving assistance from our staff. I want to formally and personally thank and congratulate Emilio Baserto and Luis Lopez for their heroic efforts in the service of our community. We all hope that our golden years will be full and rewarding and that the resources we have accumulated during a lifetime of effort and toil will be sufficient to see us through. Alas, that is not always the case and through our security and compliance efforts, we often encounter residents who are having difficulty meeting their daily needs. Without the assistance of the foundation of Laguna Woods Village, it would often be difficult, if not impossible, to assist these residents and address the issues for which they came to our notice. I would like to thank the many volunteers and donors who make these services available to our most needy residents. In closing, it has been a year of accomplishment and learning, of investment and introspection, and I'm grateful to those who've assisted in these truly historic efforts to transition from a managing agent to self-management. We now work for you and not some distant company whose primary accountability is to investors that care little about our village. Many challenges are before us, investments to make, processes to change, improving communication and accountability, providing our employees with the tools and training to serve, improving and enhancing our governance systems, and many, many other important initiatives. Our boards and staff are committed, and members are engaged and freely share their thoughts and feelings. The underpinnings of our foundation are strong, and I have great confidence that the objectives upon which this experiment and self-management are founded will come to fruition. On a personal note, it has been an honor and privilege to serve you this past year, and I thank each of you for the opportunity to serve this wonderful village. Good night, and God bless you and your families.